Hey, hello, this is Marcos here from Rage. Hey, this is Lucky from Rage. And I am PB from Rage, and you're watching Impact Channel. Oh, yeah. Shitty. I was sick. Oh, that's true. You were, you were, had, you were I sick. I had no birthday, no Christmas, no New Year's Eve, nothing. I was just laying in bed and being sick. That's good that you're healthy. No, uh, halfways. Halfways. Oh, it was great. We were eating all the time and sleeping. Yeah, eating, sleeping and playing with the dogs. Yeah. That's what we did a lot. <laughs> did you make any New Year promise for yourself? Oh, yes. Oh, many. I, I, I did many. Uh, I don't know about. Don't you drink and drive. Don't drive and drink. Don't drive and drink. Uh, don't drink and drink. <laughs> don't, uh, no, no. Well, I, my promises for this year, personal promises. I I have to lower my handicap on, on my golf. That's all. <laughs> I play golf, and I have to lower my handicap this year, no matter what. So yeah, a few tournaments and and play golf, and uh, and of course, and, and try to learn more guitar since we are playing now with very good musicians around and I'm, 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 I'm learning from a, a, any of them you know mm -hmm. trying to catch the stuff so I, I have to study more my instruments <coughs> cool which is always good for you for me is uh, stay healthy yeah, yeah. Um, don't work too much <laughs> um, don't harm anyone with what you do and uh, be happy cool I slept. I, <laughs> I, I just slept. I had nothing. <laughs> I woke up the next morning and uh, uh, Well, it was quite long. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I know, I just did it, you know. It's, um, there was no plan behind it, so I just did it. And, Enjoyed the time and I'm just glad and happy that I'm still able to do it. I have my bros now together here. This is a, actually, I would say, right now, like a ripe wine now the band. You know? <laughs> With my, both, of, both of my bros here in the band are long time friends now. <coughs> since uh, lucky since uh, 88 already. Now this is really most of the time of the, when I'm doing this, you know. You know Good friendship. So I don't know what to say about it. You know, it's, it's, it's different from when you do it, you know. It's different maybe from when you see it from the outside or so, you know. For me, this is so normal, it's my life, it's I don't think about it, you know. It's just happening. <laughs> I don't I don't know anything else, you know. <laughs> Actually, when you enter this business at the very beginning as a young musician, you would be you would be um, blurred by a picture that is not reality. Um, it's, it's, it's a big bubble. Um, you hear all those stories about sex, drugs and rock and roll and about people partying all the time and doing their music stuff and whatever. And to some extent it, it is cool and you're enjoying your time but not on a party mode. More is like a very disciplined life that you have to do. Um, to take care of yourself, what you eat, how much you sleep and all that. It's not that you drink every night, we drink like milk with honey. <laughs> Just to be fit for the next day and be able to perform and, and, and serve what the people are coming for. I mean people pay a ticket, they come to see you and it's your responsibility to deliver what, this, uh, what, what they want. And to make, our job is to make them happy for an hour or two. And uh, it is a great job by the way, superb, but it's not uh, what you necessarily will hear at the beginning. So it's a different way of life. It's a nice thing, but it's a very disciplined, very hard working life that you do. We wouldn't change that. We want to do this forever and a day, but it's different to what you would be told at the beginning. Mm. That is a big lesson, anyway. Oh, yeah. On one hand, I don't think that 
too, that much has changed. Um, the, the general settings are still pretty much the same, but um, for example, back then in the 80s, uh, there was way less competition here. Nowadays there's millions of bands around and it's so confusing. When I imagine I would be now a 15 year old metal fan and I, w I would be completely like, what the fuck shall I listen to, you know? This is millions of different um, labels. Uh, I mean like this is super death metal, this is ultra ultra death metal, this is, I don't know, what f give the fuck, uh, metal hardcore life. things, <laughs> crossover, whatever shit, you know? Vegetarian progressive know. grindcore. Yeah, <laughs> what it was, vegetarian progressive grindcore. grindcore. Yeah. yeah, for example, let's see. <clears throat> so, but, what are you on, you know, dude? What's your stuff, you know? <clears throat> ultra perverse porn of death metal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're on the same line. Yes. <laughs> so you know what? I'm joking. You know, but back then in '84, everything was heavy metal, from Venom to Bon Jovi. This was all heavy metal, you know. And there was no different uh, drawers where you put it in or so, you know. <laughs> Which was, for my uh, understanding, way more um, easy for a fan. You know, you, you could be on it, and it was like uh, like your your tribe, you know. Nowadays it's millions of different tribes and it's really confusing. That's what I see a big difference, you know? <coughs> but it's only one point of view. <laughs> I think the industry made a big change. Um, back then uh, uh, an LP or an album was a very, very valuable product. Um, people, when I was young, a kid I would, I would gather all my money one month just to get this one vinyl and I was happy to have it. And, and nowadays it's, it's, it's different, I mean, the, the, the media environment changed. Uh, it started with downloads, you, you know, you don't even want to own music anymore on your, on your uh, computer, you just stream it and things. There's a, a, a big variety of things, it's an overload somehow. And, the, and regarding a metal band, there is a, this shift going away from the product, the product you need still, of course, your album and all that, but it's going more to the, to the, um, to the, um, the happening. It's like the concert is all of a sudden more important. So many festivals grew over this time. It wasn't the case back then. And now you have all those. So people, if they, if they come to a metal thing in their head, they would like connect it to something they would go through. Like not just buy the CD or a shirt, but also go and see them live and enjoy this time. So the pro there's a product shift that is happening. Um, plus, there is so much other stuff going on. I mean, in a, in, a, in a big town like Budapest or whatever, Berlin or whatever, every day there are plenty of concerts, plus cinema, plus whatever, musical, plus whatever else. So, there's so many things that, are, that, that you can access that your, your choice is much bigger. Um, and there's a good and bad in it. If still there are coming people to a metal show, that means they are really true fans and really love that thing. And so then, and this is, you are our guys actually, uh, and this is what makes it then special again. Whereas back in the days there might have been thousands of people at concerts, but they would go there because there's nothing else happening. And <laughs> this is a different approach, I would say. How about you? music how it changed well it changed a lot <clears throat> but the amplifiers are still sounding rocking cool <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah it's, uh, I also agree in the business part of course is it changed a lot and uh, yeah I also agree that it's too much um, too much generous and, and stuff like that and for me it's only one thing which is rock <laughs> and that's it and it should be like that but everybody have their own things which is cool quickly pick, pick up your idea what, uh, yeah. what you just said actually nowadays music has lost a lot of its value and maybe the metal scene is one of the last barriers against this you know there are still uh, true fans that have a kind of feeling for uh, that it's that it has a value you know mm -hmm. <coughs> if you go to pop music or all this other any other stuff this is just an accessoire you know something like, like you buy some some new shoes, and you listen to a new pop song, you know, yeah, yeah. or a new pop band, you know, and then tomorrow you just kick it in the garbage and think the next year. There's no value anymore. <coughs> yeah. Just a trend thing. You know. yeah. Yeah, 
there's, there's so many different aspects where you can talk about. For me, for me, the biggest, the biggest change, if I, if you don't mind, the yeah. biggest change for me is um, that mm, so, the, the change of society is moving towards a direction that I don't really like, which is they lose their feeling for values. So everything is very much on the surface. Uh, it's not, you know, like basic values like being respected and respect, being selfless and different other aspects, they get lost because everything is just on the surface and not very personal. It's going, uh, other values that they call values that I don't see become more important. Financials become more important. Status becomes more important. A title becomes more important than uh, something that we should have learned from our parents at home. Um, things that are more necessary for a good live together um, for human beings. This is one of the big shifts and I think it's going further into this direction. When I see a classroom of kids with six, seven years old and I see how they behave today, we wouldn't do that 30 years ago. So it's a, it's, it's a bit, it's actually it's something to worry about in my opinion. It's something to worry about. But it's also very <coughs> important to worry about is um, that this neoliberalistic um, policy in all of the Western societies, and even taking over now in, the, in societies like China or, or India, or so is it a different <coughs> way of distribution? It's just a, a, a small amount of people who would get yeah. um, the biggest portion out of whatever is there. Ten, ten percent own everything, and all the rest is, is has nothing. You know, this is getting more and more extreme. <coughs> like the diversification. I don't know the English words for this. Yeah, <coughs> my English is another point for well. this. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a politician. <coughs> but this is making, uh, causing me troubles. I think this will sooner or later cause civil wars and stuff like this, you know. If it, it does if already. It goes, yeah, it does already. And if it goes on like this, and it, that's how it looks like, you know, it's getting worse and worse in this direction. So um, I'm not sure if, how long we will, we will still be able to live in peace, you know. <coughs>
uh, this book you're reading, yeah? yeah. Exactly this topic. <coughs> they just uh, the, the, yeah. the, they creep in from the back, and, and, the, and that's why we feel all the money well, money. actually, yeah. being a, a metal man and, and traveling through the world, because our job is at the contrary to all this what was said. We're bringing joy to people, which mm -hmm. is a, a good thing to do, actually. And it doesn't harm anyone. That's my reality. The rest I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. No. This is not a reality. I don't know. I'm, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't have any, anything. I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid. Of, if we have to die, we have to die. If we have to live, we have to live. I'm, uh, as, as far as I... Shit can as, happen every day. Exactly. So I, I, if, it, if it's, it's, not if gonna it's get this or if it's a bus, it's this. Yeah. accident or whatever, you know. Yeah. You, you had terrorists. Life attacks. is dangerous in general. Dangerous. <laughs> so, I mean, this, this is a human history. Yeah. So it's nothing new, really. If you're scared of that... Fuck it. I you're mean, fucked. You're fucked, exactly. Human beings. We're the worst oh, animal yeah. on that planet. Yeah, worst we, disease. Are the, we are the disease. And we are destroying the whole thing. Animals don't kill for joy. They kill because they have to survive. Well... These are trophy rules. <laughs> for me, I, I wouldn't destroy uh, human beings. I would destroy... Um, um, how you call it this when, uh, fuck, I don't know the name, the name in English. Sex? No, no, I won't destroy that for o sure. Overpopulation? Drugs? No, no, no overpopulation. I mean, um, because there's a lot of good human beings. There's a lot of good people who does a lot of good stuff It's just the world. too much, it's just too much. And um, if I can destroy one thing, it will be illness, sickness. Uh, so can, people can live healthy. And uh, and the willing to to uh, the people that want to get over other people this 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 desire of being over something you know the, 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 the I want to rule this this power thing like greediness exactly actually that is you narcissism I mean? you're talking about narcissism narcissism exactly narcissism that's right thank you. A baby. Hmm. A baby. A baby. You see this as a piece of art? Well, it is. In some, well, in some respect, I mean, it's, we, it's, it's, a, it's a miracle how this happens. Number one. Number two, it's not influenced by anyone. It's completely clean and, and open to everything in that moment. Mm -hmm. It didn't build this character to drive maybe into the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Also, my opinion, what do you Sure, think? sure. Yeah, as a piece of art, I will put, unfortunately, it's a but it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice piece of art. It's the Guernica from Pablo Picasso. And you? Tutti Frutti from Little Richard. <laughs> <laughs> it is a piece of art, yeah. I'm joking. It's an Achieve my dreams. Actually, I'm, I'm constantly achieving my dreams. At the moment, I just enjoy it so much <coughs> to um, to um, focus on this uh, on this typical trademark this, that this band always had, you know, this kind of uh, powerful, energetic, uh, well composed music, you know, this kind of, of uh, how, how, how can I describe rage? Some metal type of Beatles, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, um, <coughs> I have to say, but I'm really happy with what with the output we are doing right now. You know, I don't miss any orchestra or whatever things from outside or so. You know, I just love the the way we we write the songs at the moment, and um, just yeah, just happy with the output right now. Yep. So this is basically my momentary dream coming true. <laughs> For me, my bucket list one day will be like uh, all my heroes that I, you know, grew up with to work at, at least just to have a, a sound stage with them. Like for instance, for me playing with Pibi, I mean, he was my hero when I was when I was uh, 14, 15, 16 years old. It was like, oh, Pibi Bucker now playing Rage for me was like it, it is like amazing. I remember um, uh, the first time I met Hansi Kurz from Wine Garden. It was in Japan. No, it wasn't in Japan. It was in Karlsruhe in a uh, knockout festival and uh, to have a picture with Pivi and Hansi for me was like I mean you guys are like my mentors you know and 
people say, I'm your mother and as is your father. Remember that? It was really funny. It's, it's, it was really funny. So I'm like, a, you know, I have a bucket list of artists, uh, and uh, but the, the most of the people that I would love to meet or stuff like that are pretty much dead. <laughs> yeah, like Dimebag and, and Lennon and, you know, and those guys. Yeah. We'll meet them one day. Yeah, probably, yes. Bucket list for you? For me? Well, if I can consider <clears throat> a bucket list like people I want to work with, yes. work with, but in the sense of play with them at a festival or at an occasion, then there is a, a, a big number of people I'd yes. like to do. To play with them necessarily on the music, like on a record, I don't need anyone else. I mean, I'm happy with what we're doing. It's yeah, yeah. great. It's, we enjoy that. It's so, so cool. We don't need anyone else. Um, of course, in concerts it's always cool to meet people that you just know, like the Halloween guys, the Black guys, yeah. and all those. But even other bands, something. For example, we've been in Barcelona and we saw like Aerosmith, really very close. Those are heroes. It was a kick-ass show. It was so good to see that and to see the aura these guys have. Those kind of things are like we are then music fans back and can stay in the first row and check that out. And this is something very very nice. See, so, yeah, pretty much. Same, <clears throat> and for me personally, I'm I'm home here right now in this band. I uh, <clears throat> feel very much uh, in myself, you know, with, uh, playing with both my friends uh, more than ever. I think uh, I had in this band, you know. <clears throat> so I'm really wish less happy with this <laughs> <laughs> situation right now. You know, this is, can stay like this forever, so yeah, if possible. <laughs> yeah, we don't call it the the new lineup. Because it's the fourth lineup, actually. We call it the last lineup. I can't even imagine it right if, if we the could, ultimate. for what reason, or for what reason ever, if we couldn't work anymore together, I don't really know what what could come, what could come to top. We don't have to think about that. Yeah. Exactly. <coughs>
sometimes uh, where we are all there and it's really kind of a funny story somehow because I mean Chris is a hero for me, one is a Mine's hero a for hero Marcus. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that is Chris, really Chris is a drama in his, his my, band. You know? Yeah, in my other band he's a drama, he's my teacher, so it was my teacher back then. <clears throat> and then it went further and further and now those guys are gonna release one more album together under the name of Refuge this year just to complete their five album story that they had because they still have something to say and they're gonna do this one more time and play a few festivals here and there. So it's a it's a it's a hard thing somehow. It's not rage necessarily. Rage is a different story, it's a professional band that is is making a living of that. The refuge guys they have I mean the other two they have their kids, families, their work and all that. It's, it's just something that they do in addition to enjoy. Um, but this is gonna not gonna be uh, on, on a level where a band like Rage is working, of course not. But still, it's something special, it's nice, we love it. And um, let's see what it's gonna do. You know, you know. Refugee is never meant for a, for, for a commercial reason, so just for our personal friendship, you know. I don't know if we probably continue playing together, but I'm not sure if we, after releasing now this album, if we really want to do this in public in the future. Yeah. Because um, it was getting way over what we ever thought it would be. You know, and, and, uh, actually, I don't really have the time to do in two bands. You know, and plus also the other two guys. Yeah, it's getting over, it's getting too much for them. You know, like we you know it's available for for, for festivals. And, uh, it, over summer every weekend, uh, I have to go somewhere and play. So it's way more than they ever wanted to do, you know. <laughs> so we, we might keep it for ourselves, you know, meet ourselves, do a barbecue, have some beers, and play some music, but not that much in public anymore, you know. Probably. You know, now when we when the album comes, of course, we have to play in the summer now and a few shows to promote this. <laughs> we promise this to the to Frontiers, so the company that releases it. Um, but I don't think we're gonna build this up like a, a second leg or so. For, for, you know, this just a private. Um, what can you say? It's a private. Is it? Is it probably? Is a temporary highlight? <laughs>there's a lot there's a lot of stuff you know singing in the in the, <laughs> in the nightliner we have a, a running gag uh, right now between the bands uh, firewind and uh, we sound check which everybody's different band i mean sound check we play firewind stuff <laughs> and uh, they play race stuff and dark half plays our stuff and we play dark half stuff. i mean this is kind of stuff that's it's right now we play all george michael and sing it uh, exactly yeah. and then we play like george michael stuff on the bus we have like a sum of I remember 2016, uh, Devil's Tour, was it Devil's Tour was the Halloween Tour? I don't remember. Halloween. Halloween Tour. We were with Cup UK, a band from England, a cool band by the way, and um, we were uh, singing every night karaoke stuff like Josh Michael things and 80s. We have a big 80s playlist of pop 80s music and you don't want to know. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course there's a lot of, a lot of funny stuff uh, happening here and there like uh, you know, many, many, but yeah, none was, of them should was, be good share. Two, two days ago, it's cool. We were sitting in the back lounge watching a, an action movie, something with a shooting going on. Oh, yeah. And, and then it was like a big explosion, a bomb. It was, whoa, what a sound effect. And a minute later, Lisa, our twin, she came in, dude. One of our tires just exploded. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the, and the moment I thought it was sitting. I thought it was in the movie, you know. It was like, actually the effect. tire of the bus was exploding. Really <laughs> there was another story from last tour where I don't want to name him, but one guy got lost. Actually, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't find his hotel room. Yeah. And he slept opposite to the hotel, uh, the, the front door of a normal house. And the lady owning this house just opened it, saw him, and put him in. And so he slept on her sofa. And we didn't know what this guy is. And then the next day, eventually, we found him through a circumstance. Yeah, then, uh, then, uh, then his, his, his companion from the management called him, like, uh, dude, are, are, you, are you, you missing one of your guys? Like, think, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's some people from there and there, where we, I don't know what is the name of the city. They just called here and said, if we miss a guy from Australia, you know. <laughs> or from Germany. 
or from wherever, whenever. So, but we found him. It was all good. It was funny. Did, nothing happened actually, but it's, it's, it's sort of interesting if you wake up in someone's house, opposite to the hotel where you should be. And actually, yeah. they, 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 they let him sleep on the sofa, they made breakfast for him, so it was yeah. all cool. Good treatment. <laughs> but I don't <Yeah>. breakfast. Yeah. <clears throat>